In this video, we'll learn how to assign a meaning to such an expression. Uh, now, here we have some infinite process, right? And we want to make the limit of this process or to assign a value to it in a rigorous way. So uh, it would be reasonable to, to, to specify this process as a limit of some sequence and then to show that the sequence converges. Now, what we've learned so far, uh, which seems the, mo the most useful way of doing this, is the monotone convergence theorem, and we will see its usefulness. So if the theorem of monotone convergence uh, uh, theorem doesn't sound familiar, please review the previous videos in this playlist. So uh, let us see how do we actually. So uh, the first step would be to define some sequence uh, that imitates this infinite process. And then the limit of the sequence would be the value of this expression, right? So, but uh, how how would we define such such a sequence? So let's see. It seems reasonable that a one would be the square root of alpha, and then a two would be alpha plus that, right? And then a n would be if we take here just for uh, illustration purposes, like this uh, two square roots, right? And here we have to perform this process n minus two steps, right? So this would be a reasonable candidate for a sequence uh, and then we would like to show that the sequence converges but this is not a rigorous way to define the sequence so let us um, um, see how we can make it just a tiny bit more rigorous right how can we describe this process and then on top of it uh, when we define the sequence we'll define it in a recursive way which is actually uh, implicit so naturally, there there will no there will be no way to apply the limit arithmetic theorem, for example. So we'll have to act with this um, um, sequence implicitly, that is defined implicitly, uh, to deal with this. All right. So actually, a step forward would be to define the sequence in the following way. This is a recursive formula, and it shows how to compute the next value provided that the previous values are known. And this is consistent with this infinite process, right? We compute n steps, and then we know how to compute the n plus first element. And if we get back to the sequence, right, if we look at this formula, uh, then it would be right. If we were, uh, if we were to think uh, about this expression from here as uh, a n minus 1, if we provided that we make n minus uh, 1 steps here, then the nth element would be to add alpha to n minus 1 and take the square root of that. Or um, if we uh, square this expression, then we need to define the sequence. And then the sequence computing the n plus first value from the previous um, n values would be exactly imitating this infinite process. And then if we had a way of showing that this sequence converges to some limit, then the limit would, of this sequence is the most natural way to assign a value to this infinite expression. And similar method can be used for uh, continued fractions or uh, infinite products, right? Okay, so, uh, but this is, uh, as we see here, this is an implicit expression. And here we don't have a way of directly applying the limit arithmetic theorem, although it will uh, be helpful in this case, right? So we'll see. So for now, uh, what we do is we take a leap of face and we'll show, we'll suppose that the sequence converges. Let us suppose that the sequence has a limit, and later we'll prove it. And um, once we prove it, everything that we do will be justified, right? So, um, I actually said all of that. So, uh, suppose for the moment that the sequence uh, converges to a finite limit L. Well, how does this help us? Well, if we uh, if the sequence n converges to L, then by basically by the definition or by a theorem that if a sequence converges to a limit, then every subsequence of the sequence has to converge to the same limit, or just uh, directly with by the definition with epsilon and n of epsilon, uh, we conclude that a n plus one has to converge to the same limit L. And now, since this L is finite by our assumption, then a n plus one squared, this is just the sequence uh, product with itself, right? So each sequence converges to the limit L, and therefore by the limit arithmetic theorem, uh, a n plus one squared has to converge to L squared. Now, since we have equality here for every n, right, then the sequence on the left is exactly the same as the sequence on the right. So we can apply uh, and compute the limit of 
uh, those sequences. And so we conclude that the limit L if of the sequence if exists has to satisfy the following equation, because the limit of this at infinity has to be L squared, and the limit of this expression alpha is just a constant, and this converges to L. Therefore, L must satisfy this equation, provided that the sequence converges. Also, of course, we assume that alpha is positive so that we stay in the realm of real analysis. We don't go um, to the realm of complex numbers. So everything is defined. And of course, L has to be positive because uh, the square root of something is by definition here is, is the positive value. All right. So now we see that L satisfies this quadratic equation and we can solve this equation. So remember that alpha is positive, right? And basically there are two solutions. But this solution cannot be candidate for the limit. Why? Well, because if alpha is positive, then uh, this is, of course, greater than 1. It could be even very slightly greater than 1, but still it's greater than 1. And so the square root of that will be greater than 1. And therefore, here, this candidate would be, will have a negative value. And therefore, this is not a possi possible candidate for the limit. And therefore, just by assuming that the sequence converges, we arrive to the conclusion that if the sequence converges, then it must converge to this value, All right? So now uh, we're we're going to uh, actually justify this, right? All right. So now uh, what are we going to invoke? We're going to invoke the monotone convergence uh, theorem that says that if we have a sequence which is monotonically increasing and bounded above, or monotonically decreasing and bounded below, uh, then it um, it has to converge, right? We've proved this theorem in, in the previous lecture in, uh, in this playlist. So now here, uh, uh, the first step would be to show that this sequence AN is actually bounded above. Now, how did I um, arrive at this value and why I chose that? Uh, basically, we're going to prove this by induction and it will be become clear during the proof. Basically, uh, what you need to do when you encounter such an exercise, you need to try to make the proof by yourself and see where kind of the difficulties arise and then to see the proper way of defining it so that the inductive step is the easiest. So hopefully it makes sense, uh, more sense just in, in a few steps. But here uh, I I would show, um, you could even guess this, right? Uh, or, or to compute the first few values and see how it behaves. And then when you prove it by induction, then everything is justified. So we'll prove that this uh, sequence is actually for every n bounded by this constant, constant expression. And then as you've guessed, we'll show that this sequence is monotonically increasing. And once we prove those two facts by induction, it means that the sequence must converge and therefore it converges to that limit. And then this limit is the value for that infinite expression. That's the way to assign value to the expression as, uh, uh, as we've specified at the beginning of the video, right? So uh, let's, let's see the proof. So of course for n equals one, by definition, a one is the square root of that. And of course it's smaller than that. So far so good. And now we invoke the inductive hypothesis. So suppose that for every k that is uh, up to n, we have that a k is smaller than that, right? And so now we're going to invoke the inductive step and it will be clear why this expression was chosen. So um, a n plus one is just by definition, we define it to be that, okay? And now we will invoke the inductive hypothesis that a n because for all k's up to n, we assume that it is bounded by that. So it is bounded by uh, that expression, right? This is an upper bound for a n. So if I replace a n by something that is bigger, then I get something bigger here, right? And basically now, uh, here's the trick. It's, it's a bit uh, tricky to see. Uh, uh, so actually, if you, uh, if you were to compute, if you were to compute the square of that, uh, you would see that uh, this is actually equals to that because if we open uh, the brackets here, this is uh, going to be alpha uh, square root of alpha squared. This is alpha and then uh, twice the square root of alpha and then plus one. Um, yeah, this is this is actually this is actually smaller than that because alpha is positive. It's not equality here it's smaller or equal if you open the brackets, right? And then this, this expression, so this is bounded. Here's the, this is the trickiest part. You see, I made a mistake here. It is supposed to be smaller or equal because if you open it, what you get here, this is uh, alpha, and then you will have twice the square root of alpha and then plus one. 
So um, yeah, the trick of using this expression as, our, as, as an upper bound is slightly not uh, non-trivial here. Uh, okay, but I wanted you know to, to make an impressive thumbnail for the video, therefore it is a non-trivial exercise. All right, so this actually proves that the sequence is bounded, and now uh, if we were to prove that the sequence is monotone increasing then uh, everything that we did up, up to this point is justified and then uh, the limit is the limit that we have computed. So again we're going to prove by induction that the sequence is monotonically increasing. So for A1, uh, A1 is by definition the square root of alpha and then A2 if we a, by definition is alpha plus the square root of alpha and the square root of that and of course uh, since alpha is positive right then we have alpha and plus something positive here so of course it's bigger than the square root of alpha so we see that a2 is uh, indeed bigger than a1. So at least at the first step, this is a uh, monotonically increasing sequence. And now suppose by induction that for every uh, k up to some n, we have that a k is not bigger than a k plus 1. And then we'll prove by induction that for, for every n, uh, we'll do the inductive step that a n plus 1 is not bigger than a n uh, plus 2. Right? So indeed by definition, a n, a n plus 2, would be alpha plus the square root of an plus one. And now we use the inductive hypothesis uh, where, uh, where this, uh, this expression, this is um, an plus two, uh, and we'll, and this is actually, this is not the inductive hypothesis yet. We just use the inductive hypothesis that a n plus one is uh, no smaller than a n. And here we have that this is greater or equal to this square root, right? Because for a n up to n, we assume that a n plus one is bigger than a n, and so if I replace this a n plus one by a n, which is by the inductive hypothesis smaller, then I have that this is bigger than that. But this expression over here is by definition a n plus one, and therefore we have for the inductive step that a n plus two is bigger or equal than a n plus one, and this proves it, right? So therefore, uh, everything now is justified. It means that the sequence that we've started, we've defined the sequence, and we said that the sequence uh, is, if it converges, then the limit of the sequence is the most natural way to assign meaning to that expression. And then what we have seen that this expression, uh, this sequence that we've defined expli uh, implicitly, that it must be bounded without ever computing all its values, you know, because we don't know what the value of alpha. We didn't make the computation, but nevertheless, we will able to prove that the sequence is bounded above by 1 plus the square root of alpha and that this is a monotonically increasing sequence and then we invoke the limited arithmetic theorem to show that this sequence must converge and the only possible limit for it to converge it must converge basically to this limit right and that's the proof of it so uh and it has meaning of uh, at least for every positive alpha and therefore uh, what we wanted to do at the beginning, so the value of this expression for every positive alpha is that, right? And in particular, uh, an interesting example is for alpha equals 1, uh, if we substitute 1, then this expression over here is the golden ratio, just, uh, uh, you know, an interesting observation here. So if you iterate this process, and the golden ratio has something similar uh, with a continued fraction, maybe we'll do a video about that. Uh, so write in the comments if you want to see the continued uh, a fraction expression for the golden ratio. Um, and this is it. So now I would like to um, show the general algorithm to solve such a problem and to show that certain sequences that are defined um, implicitly are convergent. I'm trying to uh, to make all my videos uh, self-contained, but here we'll, uh, we'll be a bit jumping forward, but hopefully it makes sense. So suppose now that we're given an expression where the nth element is defined in terms of some function, uh, which is the function of the previous elements and, and could have some constants here, right? Now, uh, here's another thing. So um, in, in that example, we had that uh, the nth element is actually a polynomial in, in the previous ones, in just the previous element. But it could depend on uh, like uh, k previous values, and this is some function. Okay, and here this function is actually a function of a few variables, and we would like this function to be continuous. I'll explain what it means. And so here, in order to perform this trick, we actually need to be able to interchange the limit with the function. So don't worry if it's not clear up to this stage. 
uh, it will make uh, sense later, but I'm trying to uh, here just give a general method of approach. So if we're able to interchange the, the limit here, if we take the limit of this expression, then it has a n has to converge to l, and uh, all those uh, subsequences also have to converge to l, provided that a n is convergent, and provided that we can interchange the limit process with the function, and for that the function, this function f of several variables needs to be continuous. So this is just jumping ahead of ourselves, but this is just to describe the general method and uh, we will justify all of it later in the course. Okay, and then this, exp this equation, uh, supposedly, if everything is good, uh, should have a unique solution. And uh, so for that to have a unique solution, basically, uh, we need to solve it and see that uh, there is only one candidate provided that the n converges to some uh, if it converges, then the, it must converge to a unique limit, so there will be a way to select the unique candidate, as it was in, in the previous step. And then the proof will be by induction, that the sequence is uh, monotonically increasing and is bounded below, or monotonically decreasing and is bounded uh, uh, below. Right? And once we prove that the sequence uh, is convergent by proving that it's either increasing and bounded above or decreasing and bounded below. This means that the only candidate for the limit that we found at this step is, is the limit of the sequence, right? So this is it, and hope to see you in the next video.